right now as a whole. Because a lot of our people like to do the individual thing, but man, we talk about our people as a whole. Black, the black community, the African-American community as a whole, are we doing good? Hell no, no. It's a big hell no. We not doing good as a people. We on the bottom. Yeah, we on, we on the bottom. We on the very bottom of society. Always have been. Why is that? Hmm. Let's see. Go ahead. Judith 5, verse 20. Uh -huh. Now therefore, my Lord and governor. These are two people who are not the nation of Israel. They're not black, Hispanic, and Native American, right? Okay, go ahead. If there be any error in this people. So they're talking amongst themselves. They said if there be any error in God's chosen people, who you know we are, right? Go ahead. And they sin against their God. He said, and they sin against their God, right? That means if they go against what their God tells them to do, if they break his laws. Go ahead. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So the heathen, so the so-called white man and all the other nations who've been oppressing us in America, they already know that if we sin against the Lord God, what is he going to do? That this shall be their ruin. That is going to be our ruin. You know ruin ain't nothing good. When you ruin a shirt, when you ruin a building, you messing it up. Go ahead. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. And they can overtake us. Go ahead. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, uh -huh. let my Lord now pass by. But if, the, if we don't sin against God, right, if we keep his laws according to what the scriptures say, he said, let us leave them alone. Right? Go ahead. Why? Lest their Lord defend them. Because that's when God's going to start defending you. When you start keeping his laws. You understand? Give me second answers when it talks about uh, Jacob the uh, mm -hmm. beginning. So you got to understand this. Why is it so important that they keep you docile? And keep you calling yourself African American? This is why. Because this is what they know. Remember, they had the Bible. They, listen, listen. In, in slavery, they had the Bible. They knew who the Bible was talking about. That's why you weren't allowed to read it. You understand? Every slave that read the Bible, guess what? It was a slave revolt. You understand? What, uh, what's his name? Nat Turner. Started reading the Bible, slave revolt. Why? Because this is our book. But what they did, they took it and hid it from them. And said, if they catch you reading it, you're dying. Let's see why. They knew this was going to happen. This is why they got to keep you an African American and not an Israelite. Go ahead. Second Ezra 6 verse 9. Uh -huh. For Esau is the end of the world. The, the biblical name for the white man is Esau. And he's a nation who has Edomites. Okay? Just like how we're from the nation of Israel and we're Israelites. He's from the nation of Edom. And he's Edomite. And his name is Esau. Okay? So God said, what did he say about it? This is what they know. They know this. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. They said Esau is the end of the world. Go ahead. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the one. Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes. All, once all of these men get themselves together and start keeping the laws, we are the beginning of the new world. You understand? We run the kingdom. We're going to run this earth. But you got to be keeping God's laws first. You understand? Now, let me ask you this. Because I just went over this with a, with, with, with a little bro standing in front of me. Do you believe in God? Do you? Okay, let's see. Give me that. We go right back to it. Because this is what our people need. You're not being taught this in the church. You go to church? Good. I mean, it's not a bad thing. If you say no, we're going to give you a hand clap. You understand? Because church is bad for our people. You understand? One, church is governed by white people. It's See? governed by the Roman Catholic Church. See? Every church in America is governed by the Roman Catholic Church. The same, the same people, the Romans, who stuck the spear in the side of Jesus. That's right. Now they're telling you how to worship him. See? You understand? You see the contradiction in that? Exactly. So why would you go follow the church? They're not teaching you the Bible. They're not teaching you, thus saith the Lord. Right. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 24. Uh -huh. He that believeth in the Lord. So so the topic here is believeth in the Lord, right? I said, actually, you believe in God. You said yes, right? Cool. Go ahead. He that believeth in the Lord. So if any man believes in God, go ahead. 
taketh heed to the commandments. Must do what? Taketh heed to the commandments. So if you truly, honestly, in your in your mind, say that you believe in God, you would you would do His commandments. You understand what I'm saying? So right now, just off face value, you don't look like you believe in God. You want to know why I say that? Give me number 1538. You want to know why I say that? And I know it may sound like, dang, why you say that, bro? I'm just keeping it 100 with you. How, how, you would, how I want you to do with me. You understand? Right now, from your appearance, you don't look like you believe in God. You understand? Like this, this brother right here, this brother right here, that brother right there, this brother right here, he look like he believe in God. I'm going to show you why. Just off one thing. Oh, you smart. Go ahead and read it. See what I'm saying? You hip already. Yeah, go ahead. Numbers 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. This is a commandment that God gave to Moses. He said, speak to the children of Israel. Go ahead. And bid them. And command them. So this is a commandment from God. Go ahead. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. He said, all the children of Israel should put fringes in the borders of their garments. Go ahead. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. As long as there's Israelites on this earth, they're supposed to be wearing fringes. Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Now on top of the fringe, you get a ribbon of blue. It could be dark blue, light blue, royal blue, whatever blue, but it's got to be on top of the fringe. That was the instruction that God gave his people. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So he told you to put them on there so you can remember to do all the commandments of the Lord. Now remember, if you believe in God, then you do his commandments. You do what he tell you to do. Right. So when I, when I make the statement saying right now you don't look like you believe in God, it's an appearance. He gave you a dress code. He gave that to the Israelites. He didn't give that to the white man, to the Arab man, to the China man. He said, I gave it to you. I want you to look like this. Why? Why is it important that you look like this? Because when he come back, how you going to tell the people? Go ahead, get that. I'm going to show you what he, what he, when he come back, he already know who Israel. But he, he going to look for the ones who's keeping his laws. And whoever ain't keeping his laws, you think it's going to be nice? Because they teach you he's coming back with hugs and kisses and forgiving everybody. That's not what the Bible say. Let's see what the Bible say. Go ahead. Zephaniah 1, verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So it shall come to pass. When you hear that in the scriptures, that's a prophecy. That's future terms. You know what I'm saying? So he said, it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. If you was back in the day and you were sacrificing something, what was you doing? You was killing it, right? So it says, in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So when the Lord comes back and he starts killing, that's what it's saying. Go ahead. That I will punish. When he pun punishment means what? He's going to put you to death. Go ahead. That I will punish the princes. All the men. And the king's children. And all the women and children. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. You understand that? So, right. So who got strange apparel on right now? Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Hey, it is what it is. That's that's you acknowledging that. You know, you acknowledge that's a sin. You acknowledge your sin. Go ahead. Yes. I got it on all my clothes, all my shirts. You know why? Because that's what God said. You understand? And when I say I believe in God, I'm showing you. Because believe is an action word. It's not just lip service. You know, brother believe he's going to be the best basketball player. He's going to the gym every day. And he, he practices in his shot. Right? So when it comes to God and you say you believe in God, you must be practicing something. You know what I mean? Because a lot of our people, they believe in God the wrong way. They practice what the Christianity taught, not what actually God taught them. You know what I'm saying? Because the church says, come as you are. God says, Israelites need to wear fringes. See what I'm saying? Who we going to go with? We going to go with the Bible? Or we going to go with what man tells us to? Man telling you the wrong thing. You understand? Give me 1 Corinthians 11. Let's see if you really believe in God. Go ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 3. And this ain't us, man. This is spirit checking. The Bible spirit checking. You see what I'm saying? Because we, we out here, spirit checked us too. I was out there on that side. And some brother was here with a mic. And he was talking to me six years ago. You understand? 
I got it the same way, bro. So it's not it's not hatred, it's love. No, I, I know you understand. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every Israelite man is Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of every Israelite woman is the man. Is the man. Are you married? Okay. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Jesus the Christ is the Most High God. Right? Go ahead. Every man praying or prophesying. So every man praying or prophesying. That means anytime this Bible comes out, anytime you're reading it, anytime you're sending up a prayer, anytime you're in a group and we're talking about the Bible. Go ahead. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. So every Israelite man that listens to the Bible, that talks about the Bible, that prays to God and he has his head covered, he dishonors Christ. You understand? So go ahead. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So with the man, he's supposed to uncover his head. With the woman, she's supposed to cover her head. That's the, that's the law according to God. You understand what I'm saying? Now look at everybody out here, what you notice about us. We ain't got nothing on our head. No, I'm talking about us. See what I'm saying? And, and, and we out here in the same elements as everybody else. But guess what? My belief is stronger than me being cold. You understand what I'm saying? My belief is stronger than me caring about what people think about my head. You understand? Where your belief at? Where your belief at? Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. So you just learned that you're not supposed to have your hat on, so what you gonna do? Bang. Simple as that. That's a form of repentance, you understand that? Now, let me ask you a question. Do you shave your head? Do you take a razor to your head? Give me that. You know about that too, let's get it. We gonna get it for you though. So listen, we got brothers, we got grown men, bro, that have the same type of style you got. You know what I'm saying? What I'm talking about, I see, I see the shadow. They got, they got the shadow around. They got, we got brothers that rock it. Guess why? Cause that's what God gave you. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, get that. Leviticus 21, verse five. Uh huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So that means shaving off your face and making baldness on your head. Go ahead. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. If you're able to grow a beard, you're supposed to grow a beard. Because God looks at a beard as a badge of manly dignity. Right. Only Israelites, why you think, it's a trend now, honestly. You've seen it in the last few years. Most men is to have beards now. Most black men are starting to grow beards. That's spiritual, bro. They don't even know they're doing it. They think it's a fad. God commanded the Israelites to have beards. That's how men, the Israelite men are supposed to go around looking. So if you can't grow a beard, don't cut it no more. If you, if, you, if you can grow it, let it grow. Now, that's not saying you can't groom yourself. You ain't got to be looking all crazy. You know what I'm saying? You can trim it up. You can make it look fly. But you can't cut into it or shave it down. You understand what I'm saying? That's what God said. You can have a nice big beard, shave it up, and make it look real neat. That's cool. But you can't shave it off. You understand? That goes against God. That's when you, you're in the midst of sin. You understand what I'm saying? And taking a, a barber's razor to your head. And shaving it off. Or a bit, whatever, whatever you use. Clip is cool, but if you if you can't shave your head bald. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta leave stuff, you gotta leave your hair on your head. Alright, give me um what Yeah, the big one. Cause this is what happens with our brothers. A lot of our brothers, you know, some of our brothers' genetics might have you go bald, 30, you know what I'm saying, 40, whatever. You might start losing it up top, get real thin or whatnot. That's cool. Go ahead, read this. Let's let's how does God consider that? Go ahead. Leviticus 13, verse 40. Uh -huh. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bold. So you see that? God covers all avenues, because that's the excuse a lot of our people use. God already said, I know that's going to happen. Go ahead. Yet he is clean. He still what? He is clean. He's still clean to God. That means you still look good to God. Go ahead. And he that has his hair fallen off, from the part of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald. God knows this, go ahead. Yet is he clean. He's still a clean man, but you're unclean when you shave the rest of it off. That's when you become unclean. That's when God said, I'll kill you for that. Give me Romans 6, 23, because it's a sin to break his laws, right? That's what sin is, go ahead. 
Let's Romans. See, let's see what happens when you sin, bro. Romans 6, verse 23. Huh? For the wages of sin is death. So you know what wages mean, right? It's, it's payment, right? Yeah, the cost of sin is what? Is death. It's death. You understand? So in order for you to make it and be right in God's eyes, you must be keeping his law. You understand? You can't go out here and just do what the hell you want to do. That, them days is over with. You got to get yourself together. How old are you? Okay. So you've been on the earth for a little bit. Good. Leave it alone now. Leave the world alone. Come to God. You done, you done did it for 53 years. Ain't, ain't nothing new. Some, did some air pop up and just shock you out the blue? Hell no. Ain't nothing changing in this nation. You know what need to change? The Israelite man. That's right. The Israelite woman. That's right. That's the only change that needs to come to this world. So you've been in the earth for 50 some years and they've been lying to you. That should piss you off. It pissed me off and I'm only 33. It's deception. You understand? So you got to understand this. It's time for our people to come back to their God. Cause let me ask you. Let me ask a lot of a lot of people think God is for everybody, right? Give me Joel. God, God is for everybody. That's what a lot of people think. That's not what the Bible says. No, that's not what it says at all. God is all. God is the God of the Israelites, whether they're obedient or not. That's right. The ones who don't listen, He's just gonna put them to death. They're still His people, though. You understand? Cause you're not obedient right now, but you're still His people. You understand what I'm saying? You have a chance to be obedient. That's what we out here trying to show you so you can make yourself obedient, right? But everyone else, the, 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 the so-called white man, the Arab, the, the, the Japanese, they're not God's people. Let's see what the scripture says. Go ahead. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Uh -huh. And ye shall know. And ye shall know. That I am in the midst He's of in Israel. In the midst of what? Of Israel. God is in the midst of the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And what? And none else. God says it himself that he's nobody else's God but the nation of Israel. That's what he's telling you. He's your father. So even though you say you're 53, he's still your father. You understand? He's the ancient of days. He's, he's all of our father. You keep not listening to your dad and see what happens. You already know. You grew up with your boss, right? Yeah, if you did something against him, what'd he do? Exactly. Our chastisement from the Lord was slavery. You understand? Our, try, our chastisement from the Lord is what we go through today in, in the USA. That's how we get chastised from the Lord. You understand? So a lot of our people think that, you know, it's just, it's, it's the oppressive system. No, you broke God's laws. Our forefathers broke God's laws. That's why we're going through what we're going through. You understand? So you understand that you're an Israelite. So now you know. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Now you know what you're supposed to do, man. You got to keep these laws. Obey the laws of God. Because if you don't, your payment is what? It's death. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Now, I'll tell you, a week later, you, you, you do what you want to do. Hey. Check this out. Give me Ecclesiastes, because uh, uh, judgment is not exclusive. Because I'm going to tell you, this is, what I, this is what goes on with a lot of our people, right? See, some people, when they hear it, they get the fear right away. They're like, dang, I don't know. I, 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 I ain't trying to die. Some people got too much going for them. Some people are like, you know what? Well, I can't just stop this and that. Nah. I know some people who had businesses that was operating on the Sabbath. Guess what? They shut them down. Some brother lost his business because he had to shut down on Saturday. But guess what? He's keeping God's laws. So he's going to get the kingdom. That business is small compared to the kingdom. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. Watch this. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So sentence against an evil work. A lot of our people think that it has to be something drastic like murder, stealing, or something like that. No. An evil work is not wearing your fringes. An evil work is a sister wearing pants. You know what I'm saying? That's an evil work. Because judgment ain't extra. An evil work is smoking cigarettes. Defiling your temple, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Those are evil works. But because you're not judged right away, 
You understand? Because if you if you was judged right away, a lot a lot of people be dead right now. You understand what I'm saying? But because judgment's not right away, like as soon as you don't wear your fringes, you go down the street and nothing happens to you. Go ahead. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men. The heart is the mind. Your thought process, because you know, you like, you got away with it. You like, you know, ain't nothing happening to me. God ain't gonna kill me for this. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. They continue in their sin. They're like, you know what? God ain't gonna kill me for wearing the wrong clothes. Okay. Because he don't judge you right away, you're going to continue to wear the wrong clothes. You understand? That's what a lot of our people deal with. They don't believe it. I believe it. That's why I changed my way. A lot of these brothers out here, they believe it. That's why they changed their way. You got some of our brothers out here who was on the corner. They was going out, out their bag. Some of our men was out here sleeping with woman to woman. Guess what? Some, most of them are married now. One wife. Taking care of a house. Taking care of a family. Because that's, in our community, that's that's lacking. Two-parent homes. We got more single-parent homes than anybody in the nation. The black, the, the, the so-called African-Americans. You understand? Like I said, systematically, they've been trying to oppress you. They, not trying, they have been oppressing you. And the only reason they're oppressing you and getting away with it is because you're not keeping God's law. That's right. That's why. You understand? When you open your eyes up to the scripture and you start keeping God's word, keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, your life changes. Your eyes open. You understand? If you don't, you're going to be strung out on this phone. Or some young nigga going to kill you. And that's what they say, young nigga, because they act like you, according to what America made them. You understand that? Our forefathers never called us. We never called ourselves niggas. We didn't accept that. That was a term that was called upon us to say we was black. Back in Acts. You got that? Because niggas in the Bible. Not nigga, niggers in the Bible. You understand where they got it from? It means black. It's Latin for black. Go ahead. Acts 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was an Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon. Uh -huh. That was called nigger. That was called what? That was called nigger. So the people, when they seen them come in, when they seen Saul and Barnabas come in, they called them black in Latin. Because that's the term, that's the language they were speaking. You understand what I'm saying? So that word is in the scripture. The white man picked it and coined it for himself. And called you a nigger. Because it means black. You understand? So these people, these people have systematically set up to keep you down. Right? Because like we read earlier, if they if they let you get up, it's gonna be their ruin. But if they keep you sinning against God, they get the rule and it's gonna be our ruin. You see it? And it's obvious it's happening, right? Look at our look at our young men. Our young men stand on the corners daily and sell drugs to each other. That's the system can keep running now. Cause them young men, they standing on the corner and telling them brothers who they who they dealing with that they're Israelites and they need to keep God's law. You understand? Only our people do it. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this: When you see, say, a Hispanic brother, what is, what is he to you? Huh? He's a what? Fa real? That's what he is. Hispanics are your people. Native Americans are your people. What they've done is they've created the divide. You understand? But they are from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's your nation right there. Give me Psalms 119, uh, May 8th. Okay, okay, I got you. One, one more script for you. No problem, bro. That's what we're here for. We're not here to judge you. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to do what you want to do. All right, what we're here to do is tell you what God say and give you warning from him. That's it. Whether you heed to the warning, that's on you. Yeah, I ain't gonna make, I can't make you change, force you to do nothing. It's on you. Ain't nobody force us to do anything. We doing this on our own free will. Understand, go ahead. Psalms chapter 119, verse 60. Let's hear what David said. I made haste. I made what? I made haste. I said, David said he made haste. You know what it means to make haste? Haste. 
It means move fast. You made haste. Like, you about to miss the bus, you got to make haste to get there. Yeah, go ahead. And delayed not. And did delay. Go ahead. To keep thy commandments. To what? To keep thy commandments. So, David said he delayed not to keep God's commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we're men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.